and it is uh, uh, my pleasure to, to speak with uh, Joseph, Joseph Shima, who is a uh, rector, who was a 12 years rector of uh, Sevro. Uh, this is uh, university from Prague, uh, which are we, and he's our friend, the university is our friend because we both like one guy, Ludwig von Mises, and, and all Austrian school of economics way of thinking. That's very true. Um, I'm happy to be here. Second time. Second time. So, yeah. uh, Warsaw was changed during those few years that you were here? Mm, I don't see big changes, but I like it here. I'm, I'm happy to have time to spend a few hours walking through the city, so uh, very enjoyable trip. It is good information that you don't see these changes, but I can tell you about one changes. Uh, there is a list of uh, economic freedom in the world. We were at uh, 33rd place, now we are in 80-something place. That's unfortunate and it will have consequences. So, this, it, so why Czech don't <laughs> change so bad like Poland? Well, I'm afraid that the ranking for Czechs also did not improve recently. Uh, as, as always, populistic politics is to blame. It's so tempting to produce debt and uh, increase taxation and you know finance the debt through inflation so so uh, fortunately hopefully now at least there is a chance for my country with the new government to go back to sort of normal uh, operation of of public policy which which is not terribly bad. I still indeed can improve that to be much better, but at least this populism seems to be at least history for a while. We got rid of this oligarch of ours who was my finance minister and then, then the prime minister. And uh, hopefully we are now back in what's called value politics. So we are hopefully see, we'll be able to see once again at least some kind of argument between sort of left-wing and right-wing uh, political parties and we'll see what will come out of it. Yeah. We will see uh, what, what will happen, uh, but uh, now we are here. We have crisis uh, which is going to happen uh, because the printer press was active a very, very long time. And now we are seeing the inflation uh, on your lecture. You put the quote of uh, uh, Bernanke. It was that we will never, never, never uh, uh, allow inflation, inflation to, to be higher than 2%. And yeah. now it's 5.4 in the United <laughs> States just a few years after. Yes, yes. And that's indeed a great danger. Uh, it always takes time before inflation picks up speed, but once it does, then it's very difficult to slow it down or go back to some sort of normal Western style inflation rates. Uh, yeah, every indicator uh, in these days shows that inflation is picking up speed and we can expect higher rate of inflation uh, everywhere in the world, pretty much, yeah. Okay, so I have two subjects to discuss with you about inflation. First, it's my private problem, maybe not private, but our university's problem, as, and as your university problem, that inflation. We are in the business that we have income once per year, because some students pay for all year, etc., so the October is the good time, a lot of money on the bank account. Those money we need to spend in December, January, February, and some of this money we will spend even in August, one year from, from now. So inflation, it will be 20%. So we have 1 million for August, but if we will wait, we will lose 20% of purchasing power. So 
how <laughs> how to save those 20 percent you have some idea well in the past in let's say the late 70s in western countries where inflation was double digit then indeed uh, you would have inflation clauses in in, con in all contracts. So simply, if somebody pays later, uh, he will pay more. Uh, people will get adjusted to, to these inflation clauses. Uh, so I guess that's what we we believe. It's it's the past. It will never come back. But I guess it's time again to renegotiate. I always t was thinking that okay please pay me for all year so i want to have money fast and have on my bank account that i am sure that i, I have it, can yeah. afford to, uh, to to do business because i don't know if you pay me later or, or not well then so, we will have to increase the fees and that's but we don't know how, how much inflation w uh, would well, be in, in next year that's exactly the problem of inflation nobody knows exactly and that's why it's difficult for all businesses to navigate in such an environment because each of us has certain expectation about inflation that's reflected in the contracts but but you never know what the inflation will be so some people then will be pleasantly surprised because they got it right or anticipated better other people will actually lose and and th this is what what uh, e economists called well it, it inflationary tax so we are all getting taxed by unpredictable inflation rates. So you don't know how big inflation will be. You're a professor. I, oh. I am just, you know, some small entrepreneur from from small country. Yeah, and professors have crystal balls and they see the future <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, no, I believe it's it, it can be a really tragic situation. Uh, because you know, world seems well. World seems to be unpredictable even without inflation. So there is a lot of risks and uncertainties. But with inflation, well, all problems multiply. The unpredictability of the world is is even bigger, uh, and it's costly. It it will be costly for everybody. So we, rather than producing something useful, we will spend time thinking about how to adjust properly our our contracts to prevent this sort of inflationary taxation. Exactly. And second subject is uh, the same problem, but in private life of, uh, of people, of, of our uh, viewers. Uh, so how to save money from inflation in, 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 in family? Because my way is to just uh, buy everything now. I, I, I had I have uh, lots of uh, paper sheets for printer. Mm -hmm. I think it is thousands of paper sheets for, for three or four years. I've bought a lot of uh, uh, razors, uh, hundreds of them for a few years. When I, if I have my private money, I just spend and spend and spend and collect. Uh, yeah, well, that, that's what... what starts happening more and more as the inflation gets higher. So people try to get rid of money, paper, inflationary money as much as as quick as possible and then get real stuff. Uh, and it could be all these things we need in daily life. It's also that people prefer to have uh, gold and silver rather than paper money. Um, so yeah, you, you, you want to have things which do not depreciate, which do not lose their, their value. Uh, and as money do, people don't want to hold money. And that's again sort of increases inflation in the future because people trust less and less in the future of uh, like our economy. So people trust less and less in, in money. But uh, okay. We are uh, from Austrian school way of thinking and, and we, we, we don't trust to the money. Uh, but uh, it is possible that uh, that simple person, average person, uh, will, will think that I need to just spend it because it, it, lost, it will lose value. Well, people will see for themselves. If they don't buy now, 
well, then they will buy less in the future. So everybody is incentivized to buy quickly. Also, what people, I believe, should do is to people as employees, they should immediately approach their employers and try to renegotiate wages because this is uh, employees are exactly those people who, who, who lose from inflation. Uh, uh, as, as prices go up faster than, than uh, wages are. Okay, so we know that when government prints money in different ways, uh, the price will rise, and we were talking about this, I think, years and years ago. Mm -hmm. Now the, it is happening. So what would happen, what will happen next if the government wanted to uh, stop inflation, what, what government will do? Cut uh, donations, donation for, for, for poor children, or, or what? There, there is this old story about Ludwig von Mises uh, being asked this question, and uh, then he invited the the guy who asked it to uh, this one place in in Vienna. Uh, near the center bank, and uh, then his response was, now, see the noise? That's the printing presses. You want to stop inflation? Get rid of the noise. Stop the printing. And I guess, you know, this is a nice story, which, which uh, maybe simplifies a little bit, but not terribly much, because inflation is about printing money. Uh, so it has to stop. Uh, okay, and it'll be difficult. It ha governments have to have to stabilize their fiscal policies, eliminate debts, uh, decrease their spending, and that's costly but and politically de problematic. Decrease spending means a lot of people lose their jobs, but and they can go to the street, and the communist party will have more members, and they will. Uh, riots, and then uh, they will see your hand and shoot in your head. Well, you know, <laughs> very dark <laughs> can, can happen, and, and but you know, politics. It uh, well, we both you here in Poland and we in, in the Czech Republic, we went through transition processes. Yes, and at some point, you know, there were skillful politicians in in power arguing that. The transition will be costly, it has to be costly, but it has to be done because there is no other alternative. And I guess somebody like this, somebody like you know, Roger Douglas in New Zealand or to, to some extent Margaret Thatcher in England, have to do this hard political work, prevent the hard leftists and communists from winning the argument. And such a man or woman has to has to explain that reforms will be painful, but we have to reduce redistribution, we have to slow down the printing presses, that it will take time, some people will suffer, some people will lose jobs, but there is always this optimistic story that, that when you free up the economy, there will be new jobs and, and better jobs. And this way of thinking was introduced in Greece when the Greece went bankrupt, or maybe just Communist Party uh, take power because I, I don't remember. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, so far in recent past, uh, we did not have uh, reformers who would. Uh, win the debate or even even suggested to move a little bit away from the printing presses and a little bit away from the distribution and sort of go back to the core value of free market society yeah we didn't have it which is a big which is a great danger but it, that 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 has been such a battle of ideas that has been around for centuries so it's always you know, if we do, if we muddle in the middle somehow, somehow, then, you know, free marketeers argue, well, this will not end up well, you have to deregulate. And uh, then when it happens, 
well, indeed, like communists once again said, we told you this bad capitalism produces inequality and bankruptcies and unemployment. Uh, but there has to be these free market years saying, no, well, we, we suffer today exactly because we didn't do the reforms properly. We, we needed to uh, push free markets even more before we were not good enough in you know, leaving our socialist past, and now we have perhaps our second, second chance. So it's ultimately a battle of ideas, what gets taught at schools, what people believe, because then politics is just a reflection of what people believe. Exactly, and this is very hard work, work that uh, both our institution need, need to take this this uh, information battle, idea battle, and uh, uh, to, to stop uh, the changes in the country, like it's written on my shirt, that it's harder and harder to find neighbor that don't want your money. Mm -hmm. Yep, uh, but again, history is uh, full of battles of this sort, which actually ended up well. But there are indeed also uh, sometimes battles which free marketeers and, and freedom lovers actually lost and then they won but after that <laughs> after the communist killed them <laughs> yeah, yeah sometimes it comes only in afterlife yeah <laughs> exactly joseph thank you for 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 na a nice interview and uh, see you in next time at, at as bureau conference it was a great pleasure i'll be happy to to come again in the future thank you for having me thank you very much and thank you jeśli chcesz przygotować swoją firmę na nowy ład i poznać najlepsze rozwiązania dla siebie sprawdź pakiet nagrań z konferencji uczelni asbiro klikając w link w opisie tego filmu